Hi, welcome to the second Year 8 Biology Review video. This is for the second assessment that we ran, and for anyone that's joining from the outside, it's the second half of what I would expect all Year 8s to be able to understand by the end of their year in biology. So we've got 30 questions, first 10 are multiple choice questions, and the second and third 10, so the second 20, or the remaining 20, I should say, are open response questions. The first question that we had in the uh, in the assessment was to label the diaphragms as a simple recall question. Uh, those of you who remembered correctly remembered that the diaphragm was label E. There are several structures that actually uh, contain tiny hair like um, uh, structure called um, uh, cilia in the respiratory system. I accepted J and I also accepted B. After having done a little bit of research on this one, both of those structures actually contain cilia. The heart and blood vessels make up the circulatory system. Two halves of the heart, one half pumps blood to the lungs, and that's uh, the deoxygenated blood, and the other half pumps the blood that's been oxygenated um, from, uh, and that returns from the lungs, and uh, the other half pumps blood around the rest of the body for respiration. So the correct answer for this question was A. The thinnest blood vessels are the capillaries. Out of the veins, arteries, and capillaries, tributaries is actually a geographic, geographical term, I believe. Um, the, the, the thinness is actually labeled uh, lumen in, um, in biology. The air that we breathe in contains more oxygen and less carbon dioxide than the air that we breathe out. So this, uh, this, this clearly is uh, uh, an, a question where B is the right answer. So for the next question, we actually had a human skeleton and students had to label the joints. Um, the the uh, initial, initial feeling was that uh, the answer to A would be a fixed joint because it's referring specifically to the skull. However, we do, did also realize that the labels uh, are a little bit vague because the label for A actually does point towards the jaw and the jaw is a hinge joint so in the end we uh, accepted both answers um, out of a typical class of around about 25 there was around about four people who actually picked a uh, hinge joint but uh, we we accepted that answer in the end after moderation b was a was a clearer case that was the elbow and that is a hinge joint and c is the ball and socket joint which is the hip joint Skeletal muscles are attached to bones with tough cords called tendons. The type of muscle that is represented by this picture, this is actually a picture that's identical to the picture in the textbook, and this was uh, cardiac muscle. So the longer response uh, question. So uh, for a maximum of three marks, uh, definition of the term aerobic respiration. Essentially, what you have to do is you have to break it down into uh, two different parts. Aerobic, anything to do with uh, aerobic means that you have a process that takes place in the presence of oxygen. And then basically what you need to do when you have a, uh, a question that asks you to define respiration Look at look at the type of respiration. This is aerobic respiration. So what you can do is you can actually give the equation. Uh, you can give the reactants and you can give the products of the equation. So it's the breakdown of glucose, presence of oxygen, that uh, then forms carbon dioxide and water. Um, if, if the answer indicated that there was a release of energy and any of the um, three preceding parts was missing, then uh, we were able to give uh, a mark for that. The name of this structure is, of course, the alveoli, um, or alveolus. Alveoli as plural, alveolus uh, singular. Uh, the clue was that this was the structure at the end of the bronchiole in the lung. The keyword or keywords, I've taught gases exchange, uh, but we also accepted diffusion. We were looking for diffusion, and that was emphasized in the revision video. However, I did also accept gases exchange as well. It was really critical for, for students to actually get the um, get the direction of the gases that are being exchanged in uh, the, the right way. So you needed to say that oxygen was moving uh, from inside the alveolus or inside the structure to, to the blood capillary on the outside um, and carbon dioxide was moving from the outside um, in the 
in, in inside the um, uh, blood capillary, inside the blood, uh, back into the uh, alveolus. So um, some there are some people who 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 lost marks because they didn't actually um, they didn't actually specify in which direction the gases were uh, exchanged. There were a couple of people also that lost marks as well because they misread the question. They the the question clearly says what moves into it from the blood and what moves out of it from uh, uh, what moves out of it into the blood and they misread the question they they thought that the question was asking uh, about what happens to the gases that are actually inside in terms of what's exhaled and inhaled so they said that carbon dioxide moves out as in carbon dioxide moves out of that structure out of the uh, respiratory system and oxygen moves in from the a- atmosphere through the uh, structures of the respiratory system into that alveoli. But again, the question uh, the, the question needed to be read uh, carefully. It was talking about what moves in and out of the blood uh, through that gaseous exchange. Uh, this next question was actually really, really well done. I was so impressed with um, how the students have memorized. They knew, they, they knew that uh, one of the two were going to come up. That was the preparation that, uh, that we had for them. Um, and this question just asked about what would uh, what was happening to the ribcage as the uh, as 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 a human breathed in? Explain how this causes air to enter the lungs. So it's very very um, great to see people rattling off. You know, very critically, diaphragm contracts, rib muscle contracts, rib cage moves up and down, volume in the chest increases, pressure inside the chest decreases, and air is forced into the lungs. I was very very impressed with how. Uh, the students were able to link um, the movement and the contraction of the muscles and the volume changes with the pressure. That was that was that was a, a pleasant surprise. Of course, all you needed to do was, uh, as a student, you needed to get four of these points in order to secure uh, full marks. And many many students secured full full marks. Uh, this was a question. The next question was a question that uh, I had some reservations about, but uh, we went we went with it because um, it talks about pulse race, it talks about exercise, and the um, the expectation is that uh, students are able to handle multiple uh, in the piece, pieces of information in the graph. Uh, the second graph was uh, a graph on lactic acid concentration. My reservation of this was that it may cause confusion, but in actual fact, it was actually a really really good question because um, it. Uh, it helped distinguish between um, students who could just like guess uh, the, the the answers just but w- without having read the graph and and actually reading the graph itself. So what happens to the pulse rate as the speed increases? The pulse rate increases, and the explanation is all to do with what is actually needed by the muscles. Uh, the muscles work harder, and this is actually you know a great question where you actually have to use uh, the, the the correct comparative adjectives. You have to say that they work harder, so they uh, they require more oxygen for respiration because they are respiring more. Uh, you could also uh, get credit for suggesting that they are producing more carbon dioxide, and the carbon dioxide needs to be uh, they are producing more carbon dioxide, and the carbon dioxide needs to be um, gotten rid of uh, because of because of the, the fact that there are more and so the blood is also um, uh, the blood also needs to basically supply the oxygen it needs to supply the glucose for the respiration because there's more respiration any answers of, of, of that uh, of that level were able to secure marks very very quickly uh, the one thing that I did see was that there were students who like went over uh, above and beyond um, the, the the actual question because they started talking about um, respiration, but then they started talking about the uh, the, the 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 rise of uh, lactic acid. And the question isn't not asking that. This is we 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 omitted that question. Um, we need what students needed to do is they needed to make sure that they didn't waste time commenting on lactic acid. And this is a really good question because it allowed me to figure out who was actually uh, really able to uh, express the points in a very, very clear way. Uh, the next question was about antagonistic muscles and um, the, uh, the the most common muscles that were uh, described were the biceps and the triceps, but there are there are other antagonistic muscles that are in the human body. It was really really important, however, to to describe anti- antagonistic muscles as um, a pair of muscles where one contracts and the other one relaxes. You, you could not say that uh, where one muscle 
moves the limb in one direction and then the other muscle moves the limb in the opposite direction. Um, that's not what and that's not what um, the definition of antagonistic muscles is. That 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 could be that could be used as a description for any two muscles in the human body. So you needed to talk about uh, relaxation and contraction and the fact that one relaxes, the other one contracts, and that causes movement in one direction. And then the uh, you have contraction and then relaxation. Relax, uh, they, they, they basically swap around. So you have one contracting, the other one relaxing, and then in the other direction you have one relaxing, the other one contracting. Uh, three functions for the skeleton, support, movement and protection. It was great to see students also suggesting that um, the skeleton also has marrow on the inside that helps to make uh, blood cells. They only needed three, uh, three responses for this. And that's it. That takes us to the end of uh, the review video. So if you're a year eight, well done for uh, going through this. Now you are ready to go through your uh, reflection task and best of luck with that. And uh, thank you very much for watching. If you've just joined us from, from the outside world, appreciate it.